The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We come into the opening bell in about 24 minutes, and we got markets a little bit mixed this morning. The S&Ps make a high of 4898 yesterday. Headlines across the board, you get the Dow closing at 38,000 for the first time ever. And this morning, we pick things up with a little bit of choppy action. S&Ps up by six points, trading at 4887 right now. You're looking at the NASDAQ 100, you're up by about a quarter percent, 17,499. You're positive by 40 points or about a quarter percent. Dow, slightly in the red this morning, off by about almost two tenths percent, 63 points in the red, 38,136 on the Dow. And you get the Russell. How about it? The Russell strength, eight tenths percent in the positive, 16 points in the green, trading at two. 2012 extreme volatility in both directions on that Russell. You talk about extreme volatility. I hope you were listening if you were thinking of buying Bitcoin as this thing ran up to the ETF approval because, boy, it has been a one way slide to the tune of 20 plus percent. And you're talking about giving back, folks, to November 9th. Two and a half months, just like that, man. You had the first acceleration in October, and it seemed like that second acceleration that we got right after the first acceleration, a lot of optimism on the ETF. We've paired some of that optimism right now, and you got Bitcoin down 1500 bucks at 38610 right now. You know, maybe 37.5 is a little bit of area that you might get a little bit of chop. You trade through there, and 27.5 is right back in the cards, man. Absolutely remarkable when you put that in context of what's going on. As I've mentioned, longer term, you know, you're holding Bitcoin for a while. I think you got a lot of upside as you got rid of some bad actors in Bitcoin. But short term, when you hit almost 50,000, there was going to be a lot of selling pressure. And we're seeing it come through. We're seeing it again down almost 1,600 bucks. Crude, down a dollar. Go to a five-minute chart. Now, what's interesting is, is that you know, over the weekend, I was seeing some pretty affordable prices. Maybe that spiked to 75.46. Maybe you just got gas prices deviating. I'm seeing some higher prices on the on the pumps recently in the last couple of days. Nonetheless, you got crude down a dollar, 73.75 this morning. You jump over to gold, a little bit of volatility for gold. Overnight, check it out, up to 2040. You're back to 2025 right now. You're basically positive by three dollars. We're pretty close to flat on the session, and we jump to notes and bonds. The all important as we get the 10-year right now. Negative by six ticks, we got a yield of 4.13. 4.13 is the yield on the 10-year right now. We have elevated yields. 30-year, down by 17 ticks at 120.06. You jump over to the dollar index. Anytime you're going to have some rising yields, what do you got? Check it out, right? We got the dollar at 103.44 right now. Now, what's in focus is you got dollar yen. So you have the Bank of Japan last night. And you got Euro US dollar with some action as well. Nonetheless, we got volatility across the board, man. We got the dollar index at 103.44. And where do we kick things off this morning? We're going to talk a little bit of Netflix. Earnings season in focus, Netflix in focus today. And Netflix up by $9 right now. Strong numbers, but boy, the story that's making the pages, and rightfully so, paying $5 billion for WWE Raw. Which I believe airs Thursday nights. Is that correct? Uh, some of my buddies are really into this still in their 40s. Still into this. Talk about it. Love it. Uh, it you know, it's funny. When I was a kid, I remember the conversations of is it real or is it not? Is it not? As I've become an adult, I've actually grasped how, uh, you know, Vince McMahon, just great storytelling. Great storytelling overall. I uh, missed out as a kid almost, you know, that, that you, you just got to embrace the storytelling, not the reality of it. People love it, man. Um, yeah, so they are going to be the exclusive home for the show in the U.S. and other territories. They're going to air three hours of live wrestling weekly. Now, is this Thursdays? I think it is, right? They're going to pay $5 billion over 10 years. It's going to air on Netflix in the U.S., Canada, Latin America, and other international markets. Maybe somebody can help me out in the den. Is that Thursday nights? I think it is. Let me scroll down. 
WWE Raw. Nonetheless, you're seeing quite an entry here into live programming, and it would make sense. Um, yeah, check it out, right? WWE up 20% pre-market. That's a big deal for them as they're getting paid $5 billion. The conglomerate is also adding former wrestler The Rock to its board. So The Rock goes on the WWE. You know, it's interesting. Uh, the Rock's been catching a lot of grief because he's had a few flops. I think it was Black Adam was a little bit of a flop um, and a couple others. So he's kind of drifted a little bit back to WWE, maybe spruce the... the um, attention he gets in there that's where he started things of course the rock um nonetheless he's going to be on the board and he will be granted the intellectual property rights to the rock as a result of doing that um and he's going to provide promotional services to the wwe and he's going to get about 30 million dollars in stock listen for the reach that rock has the rock uh, what's it? yeah i'll pull up his instagram account i mean i think he's one of the most followed people on instagram in the whole world yeah but this is quite a shift so you got the WWE, right? The UFC is owned by the same company here. So get ready for, you know, everything to be on the table here. And that's what's so interesting. The UFC offers many of its matches on ESPN+, Plus, while the NFL is selling Amazon rights to Thursday night. I had to sign up for Peacock to watch a game recently. Um, so it's happening, man. The live shift is on right now. Bra is the most watched WWE programs. It gets a 1.5 million viewers per show. Debuted in 1993. Yeah, it debuted when I was 13 years old. I remember this, man. I had friends that were all about it, and those are the friends that are still all about it. Um, John Cena. Yeah, so check it out. Comcast paid about $265 million a year for the rights to Raw, but the owner, NBC Universal, last year acquired the rights to SmackDown, considered the second best for 287. Check it out. It's up to a billion dollars, right? Is that right? Because they got five years. Is that what I said at the beginning of this? What do they pay? Five billion dollars. Oh, ten years. So five hundred million. Not bad when they were just getting two hundred eighty-seven million, right? So they're paying five hundred million. They're paying it for ten years straight, and they negotiate the next deal for UFC next year. UFC's on fire, man. Now that is a reality show. Yeah. Yeah, so they're going to report after the close. Okay. thought I saw them out there, but it was just all of this. Yeah, so that, that uh, you talk about compounding things in terms of the close. So Netflix, out uh, with their numbers after the close. And boy, you got some big acceleration up to 494. This thing, you take a look on a daily basis. From their last earnings, you pop from 350 to 400 you close out the year at about 500 we're going to open at 495 right now this morning longer term that's a daily going back a year but you got to take it back a three-year weekly interesting we're bumping up against that 618 right now that's where the acceleration really began i guess it began at 600 right you had one acceleration from 600 to 400 and then you had an acceleration from 400 down to 162 uh netflix catches a boost pay attention because the 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 scenery is changing in streaming and it makes sense Otherwise, you're going to see, I mean, myself, I, I subscribe to a lot of streaming services. I got Tommy in the house, of course, right? So you got kids in the house. It's a little bit different. We're probably going to keep Net, uh, Disney. Don't plan on canceling that anytime soon. Netflix, he watches some stuff on too. But when you're talking about myself, people are going to start cycling through these streaming services. And guess what? The one way that they can prevent that is live programming. And you're seeing it starting off today. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at 
TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by four points right now. You're looking at a NASDAQ 100, positive by 27,000, slightly in the red after closing at 38,000 for the first time ever. To talk about some of the market action, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, right here on Tiger TV, the Schwab Network with Fast Market, 12 noon Eastern Time. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at the Schwab Network, they break down the market action. They walk you through hypothetical trades using options, folks, every day, 12 noon Eastern Time. They usually line up three of them, and we're coming into a great week of earnings right now. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, it's earnings season, and the week in terms of economic data is a little backdated. We're looking for durable goods and first look at fourth quarter GDP on Thursday. Personal income and outlays on Friday. You know, the jobless claims numbers have been very strong, so the major data we're going to get is going to be later in the week, but... After the bell today, Netflix. That'll be a big one. What's going on with the password sharing? Is that adding to the numbers? Is the uh, advertising stream, you know, advertising segment adding to the numbers? So, you know, it, it's a it's an interesting tale for people watching. Let's say, uh, what's going on in AI right now, Tommy? And think about this, Netflix as it sits right now, is the clear winner in terms of streaming, right? They are the gold standard, and yet the stock is still almost $200 off its highs that it hit during the you know all the euphoria about Netflix. So it's, it's a cautionary tale, but Netflix still the clear leader in uh, streaming, and they'll have uh, results after the bell today. Did you see the story out there, Kevin, about WWE Raw this morning? So they're spending yeah. $5 billion. Pretty interesting that that comes out ahead of, you know, the expectation tonight. We've talked about I found myself getting ready to talk to you this morning, looking forward to it. I know you're on vacation last week. We're excited to have you back, man. And um, we've had conversations, Kevin, about the, the gamblers, the, the draft kings, the fan duels, and how much sure. money they're going to have to spend, right? It's a great business to be the bookie in gambling, but boy, they're spending a lot of money. And I found myself wondering, I mean, the next shift in streaming is going to be towards live. We're seeing it play out a little bit. You got Amazon with their Thursday night games. I had to sign up for Peacock 
a few weeks ago to catch an NFL game for the first time ever, that it was exclusively on Peacock, and now you have Netflix spending $5 billion. Do you find yourself having that conversation, Kevin? Because I agree, man. Netflix has been on a tear. I got it up here in a three-year weekly on the Thinkorswim platform. It's almost been a straight sh you know, shot from 162 up to almost 500, but you got that $700 high. But I feel like the next race is going to be on here, and it's going to be an important one as people maybe start to shuffle through some of those streaming services. And guess what? You can't shuffle, shuffle through them if you have to watch something live. And I think they all kind of get that right now. Well, the, the next, probably the next chapter in evolution of streaming, and you're starting to see it already, is live sports, right? That's the next level. And how does ESPN play into that? Right. Yeah. That's the big problem. Disney, with so many other issues, do they hold on to that golden goose? Things are getting more and more expensive. Teams are starting to turn on their own networks and, and stream their games that way. There's so many different ways that live sports can go. You know, yeah. recorded shows, Seinfeld, Friends, you know, Suits, those are easy to figure yeah. out. But how do you figure out sports, live sports, and the trends that follow there? That, I think, is the next chapter in streaming, Tommy. I agree, man. It's going to be awesome to see it play out. And as traders, I think we'll get a little bit of volatility because they're going to have to spend some money. That's for sure. We see it happening um, with Netflix. I was looking some of those deals for WWE. They were about $280 million about the last deal they had. So they're getting $500 million for this one over the next 10 years, um, $5 billion bucks. It's a big number. With that in mind, Kevin, we talked about Netflix. They're coming up today. we got a couple different equities. Do you have a few equities you're talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today? Earnings today, Tommy, Netflix, PayPal, and Texas Instruments all uh, nice. on today's show. Black Folio is going to do a presentation on PayPal. Then we're going to trade Netflix, Texas Instruments, and PayPal, Tommy. So real good show for you today as we start to get into the thick of earnings season now. And can you give us a little teaser maybe on PayPal? This one, you know, baffles the mind. It's amazing how... You know, we hit the market at all-time highs, Kevin, pretty much across the board almost, uh, except for the Russell, you know, and that is because some of these smaller stocks, you still have so many equities that are so far off of their highs. The payment processors, man, I got just on a three-year weekly, PayPal, I'm showing 310, we're at $63. Maybe give us a little bit of teaser. What do you think of, of PayPal at some of these uh, pretty low prices compared to where we were just a couple years ago? Yeah, PayPal, one of the leaders, right, in in – uh, digital wallets and non-cash uh, spending has been absolutely Ooh. destroyed. Lately. Now, they've made some business errors. They've made a few political errors that have hurt the company, but they've got a new CEO. Remember, they still have Venmo, which is extremely popular. So, yeah, they are still making free cash, and they do have cash. So it's a healthy company, but, nice. the, you know, but the stock – has been absolutely cool. destroyed. So, yep, uh, it's going to be a fun one to cover today, Tommy, nice. and see if this is worth it yet or it's too expensive still. It's pretty remarkable, man. I just put it back even a little bit further on the monthly, and you're talking about we're back to September of 2017 prices right now, which is just amazing considering how the world has changed in payments and everything. I use Venmo all the time myself, though, so I hear you. Uh, Kevin, I appreciate the time as always, man. Great to talk to you. We look forward to Fast Market at 12 o'clock today, and I'll talk to you tomorrow, man. Have a great day, Tommy. You too. Check it out, folks. You heard it. They're talking three great stocks. They'll be talking Netflix, man. That's the highlight after the bell. Interesting. You get some news ahead of that. And yeah, check out that PayPal, man. I mean, that is, you talk about parabolic. It's a perfect par parabola. Uh, parabola. Uh, up to 310, right back. They give it all back just like that, and we're actually below that price level. But as Kevin said, you know, they got strong action. They got free cash flow. They'll probably be around. They're going nowhere. And, yeah, they're trading at 63 bucks. But looking forward to fast market today as they break down some of that action. And, yeah, live sports, man, right? Did uh, were you, were you guys and girls signing up for Peacock to, to catch that game? I did. I signed up for a month for 599 for Peacock to access that NFL game. What was that, a few weeks ago? Was that a playoff game? Might have been. Was that a wild card game? I think it might have been. I forget, but I signed up. Six bucks. Now, the next part of that story, which is interesting, right, is when I signed up for Peacock to access that one NFL game, so think about it. I wasn't the only one. I'm getting emails the next day, of course, 50% off for the year. 
no thank you. I don't need Peacock for a whole year yet. But the, the more interesting part on my side of things was that when I was signing up for Peacock, they gave me the option, okay? And, whoops, and Peacock is Comcast, NBC Universal, Comcast Universal. And so last earnings, let's see, in October, you had Comcast down at about 38. You're at 43 right now. But I, I, when I went to sign up for Peacock, okay, I had two choices. I could sign up for $6 with ads or I could sign up for like 10 or $11 without ads. And it was a no-brainer. I signed up with ads instantly, okay? And I think you're going to see some big shifts in that. I think these streamers are really going to capitalize, and I think it's amazing how you've gone full circle where what happened? You had television with commercials. All the streamers said, no, 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 that's not our plan. Reed Hastings said, no, 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 I'm never going to sell ads. People like to binge. But guess what? You can make more money selling ads than you can selling subscriptions, folks. And um, I think that's where it's going. Nonetheless, we got markets slightly in the green. S&P's up by two. We're coming back for the opening bell. Don't go away, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at S&P, positive by four. NASDAQ, you give it up, you were flat for a moment. You're positive by seven. Dow, negative by about 65 points right now. That's two-tenths percent in the red. And the Russell leading the way in positive territory, up by 17 right now. We check in on commodities, on some yields. Gold, up about $2 right now. Crude, back above $74. You're negative by 55 pennies. And you jump to notes and bonds, and the slide continues. And we got lower price and higher yields coming at you. We got the 10 year right now, down about eight ticks. We're talking about a yield in the 10 year of 4.14%. 4.14%. And remember, we're eight days away, folks, from a Fed meeting, 2 p.m. Eastern Time on January 31st. Next meeting to follow after that, March 20th. 4.14%. Interesting. All right, we got a lot to talk about, man. But before, uh, you know, jumping back to the Netflix story, so great commentary in the den as usual. Uh, Jimmy, great question, right? I mean, how does that deal come out in the morning when you got afternoon earnings? Now, not how, but why, maybe. Maybe you save that one for earnings. Maybe you're trying to disguise something going on. Nonetheless, interesting that um, just from a game theory perspective, right? And game theory matters, man, okay? Uh, they're coming out with the earnings after the bell. They come out with this news, which is pretty good news, before the bell. Now, it's interesting here, okay? They're paying $5 billion over 10 years. What's remarkable is that what did they sell them for? I think $9.3 billion. The whole company got sold just last year for $9 billion. Now, Netflix isn't in the business of running the WWE. I get that part of things, okay? But it is interesting that you sign a $5 billion deal just to air their program for 10 years. Meanwhile, the whole company was bought for $9.3 billion just last year. Different story, though, nonetheless. And, yeah, it's Endeavor, right, run by Ari Emanuel, and they own UFC. So you got those partnerships brewing. It falls under the category of live sports, even though it's not quite live sports. You could call it live theater, masquerading as sports. Nonetheless, um, people watch it live, and uh, the shift is on. All right, what else we got going on? Let's jump to some of the other equities this morning with some action. How about Procter & Gamble, man? There's a run for you. Procter & Gamble, price hikes boost revenue. Well, Gillette write down ways on the earnings. Yeah, Procter & Gamble on Tuesday, mixed quarterly earnings and revenue. But guess what? They got higher prices, um, and that's boosting revenue by 3% up there. Earnings for Procter & Gamble, a buck 84 versus a buck 70. Revenue, they just missed there. And they had to write down the value of the Razor brand Gillette by $1.3 billion. Yeah. So as they restructure that, man, net sales up 3%. Healthcare division declining 3%. But guess what? They saved themselves through uh, price hikes. For fiscal 2024, Procter & Gamble now anticipates core earnings per share growth of 8 to 9% narrowing its prior range from six to nine. However, it now expects unadjusted earnings per share to be flat to down. Unadjusted, significantly lower than six. You gotta love those adjustments, man. Nonetheless, the market plows higher on a beat on earnings. Yeah, net sales rising, man. And organic revenue, which strips out acquisitions, divestitures, foreign exchange climbed 4% on the quarter. Pretty remarkable. Look at that stock, up 5.2%. And that is not a stock that you usually see that type of volatility, man. We jump over to Boeing shares. They're basically up 11 pennies, almost flat this morning as they're dealing with some woes. You jump over the story, United. United. Yeah, so they're up by 8.4%, okay? And what's remarkable here, the headline... And this doesn't have to do with the earnings, okay? They get their earnings out. But check it out, man. Boeing, Boeing's going to have some real problems, man. United CEO cast doubt on the 737 MAX 10 order after Boeing's recent problems, okay? They're considering fleet plans without the Boeing 737 MAX 10. The CEO expressed frustration with delays and manufacturing issues at Boeing. The MAX 9 grounding after the door plug blew was the straw that broke the camel's back. This is the CEO of United Airlines. This isn't some analyst, Okay. United has 79 of the 737 MAX 9 aircrafts in its fleet, more than any other carrier, okay? He's frustrated. He's reached his breaking point. 
Um, and so pay attention to that one. Boeing flat today, but that's going to matter eventually, man. I think we're coming to roost. All right, let's check out some of the big the FANG stocks as we kick off the opening bell. Can't hold down, man. Look at this run on Apple. Apple is up $15 from where it was less than a week ago. You're pushing $195 right now for Apple. You jump over to Microsoft shares. A little bit of a different story. Down about half a percent to $394.27 from Microsoft. You jump over to Google shares. Up a quarter percent right now. We jump to Amazon. Down about half a percent for Amazon. $154.05. We jump to Meta shares. Slightly in the positive by three tenths. Let's jump over to AI. NVIDIA. NVIDIA giving it up, huh? You're off by eight dollars. That's about one point four percent to the downside. We jump to AMD. They're giving it up slightly as well. Just giving up some of those big gains you've had recently, really. Negative by one point seven percent for AMD. All right, let's see what else we got pulled up here. Oh, come on, shame on me. One more. There we go. Okay, what else do we have talking about? Yeah. Oh, this is a good one. Okay. Uh, talking a little bit of real estate, right? Pretty interesting in terms of what's going to happen with the real estate market, man. For property investors, the price of homes is still not right. Higher interest rates, record home prices are cited for a pullback in buying. I mean, it's not exactly like it was in 2008. And this is just comparing it to where you were in Q1 2022. Okay. Check out the last couple of years. So single family homes purchased by investors, right? Yeah, quite a drop off of these interest rates. Not surprising if you're paying attention in terms of where interest rates are, but many analysts expect institutional investors purchases to remain muted in 2024, right? 82% of small investors say they plan to buy the same number of rental properties as they did in 2023 or fewer. I'm not going to ramp things up, man. Yeah. Now, you know, they make the case that Blackstone just bought Tricon Residential for $3.5 billion, 30% more than the value of those shares at the time of the announcement. They own 35,000 homes, mostly in the Sun Belt, and owns and develops multifamily buildings in Canada. So not everybody's keeping their cash in their pocket, as you got Blackstone out there making use. But nonetheless, we're going to see where we go. The market's remained relatively strong in Florida, man, which is, which is interesting when you think about what is going to happen when you get up to uh, when we start actually cutting and potentially see interest rates pulling back a bit. All right, what else we got? Oh, you got to talk a little bit of China, right? This story out last night. Is it? How much is it? I saw the number last night. Come on. We got quite a plan. Yeah, two hundred and seventy-eight billion. That's the number I wanted. Two trillion won. Nice round number in China. Two trillion won. The latest package from China, $278 billion to buy mainland shares via offshore trading links, show a sense of urgency from Chinese authorities. It comes after a route that's seen Chinese and Hong Kong stocks erase more than $6 trillion in market value since the peak of 2021. And remember, our markets are at all-time highs right now. We'll talk a little bit more about China. We'll talk some other equities with their numbers when we get right back, folks. Stay tuned. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. And 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are Designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by three, hanging on to gains barely. You're trading at 48.84. NASDAQ 100 barely in the green as well by 10. And the Dow sliding to 110 in the red. And the Russell giving up a lot of those gains. We're up by 10 points right now. So we're talking China. And, you know, you got big numbers, man. The Hang Seng is up 2.6%. 2.6% on those numbers. But here's what I wanted to talk about. So they come in, China. Right. And the story is, as I just mentioned, 278 billion to buy mainland shares via offshore trading links. OK, that's the package. That's the news. That's what has the Hang Seng up by 2.6 percent. But this has happened before, folks. OK. It's hard to blame investors for their cynicism. And they're talking about cynicism of the package they just passed and how it's a short-term fix that may not really fix anything once it's done, okay? China has had a history of marshalling policies, policy resources to stanch market bleeding, but few succeeded. During the 2015 route, state funds reportedly spent $240 billion over the summer, but that didn't keep prices from falling in after the buying wound down. Uh, they added circuit breakers, which actually accelerated things, but here is that 2015. We all like looking at charts, okay? You see this slide. The Shanghai Composite was above 5,000. You make it down to 3,500. They come in with that package of, what, 240 billion. Now, it's 1.5 trillion won was what they had then. This time it's 2 trillion. We're nine years later, okay? But look what happened. <sighs> Nothing happened, man. This thing drove down to 3,000 after getting a bear market rally. All right, you got two pops. The second one, you dropped straight. 25% is what this thing accelerated. So yeah, they bought themselves three to six months. But unless you really get some changes in terms of what's going on in the underlying economy over there, that might not be the recipe for success. Yeah. All of this suggests that throwing money at the market, as Beijing appears willing to do, while economic woes lie unresolved, will only embolden traders to sell into what may be, at best, a bear market rally. So keep that one on your radar, man. It's a big day today. Hang Seng up by 2.6%. But history has shown us that just 
Just giving people money to buy stocks doesn't fix the economy, folks. And as traders, I think we all understand that. But when you see it in the charts and how things really progressed the last time they threw hundreds of billions of dollars at their stock market, it doesn't solve what's going on there at all. All right, what else do we got going on? Yeah, we could talk a little bit of Microsoft. Let's see, we talked a little bit of Netflix. We talked United. Go round and round. Let's talk a little bit of EV. Why it makes sense for new EV drivers to look beyond Tesla. This story out from the journal this morning. We were talking about BYD yesterday, right? Uh, you know, I found myself staring at a Rivian. I was in Lowe's parking lot this weekend. I was doing some painting on a unit and I'm sitting in Lowe's. I pull up and there is a beautiful Rivian truck in front of me. And I literally just walked around that thing saying, man, this thing is beautiful. Uh, now, the Rivians, they've gotten some good acclaim for the quality of their craftsmanships. Uh, Tesla, on the other hand, sometimes the quality of their craftsmanship is a little bit lackluster, to put it lightly, in terms of some of the reviews that I've read myself. 59% of the EVs sold through U.S. dealerships in December were leased rather than bought. Okay, The highest share in three years. Yeah. Um, its leasing share is at the other end of the spectrum. 2% of deliveries in the fourth quarter, the lowest in the last four years. Tesla, they got some problems, man. Um, it's across the board. Leasing is a natural fit for EVs, okay, they talk about. Uh, and they tell it's just it's just not lining up for Tesla, man. Residual values in dealership EV leasing contracts, right, going up. You're talking about residual values at almost 55%. Tesla does not have a banking arm like traditional automakers, okay, and might intentionally be offering uncompetitive leasing terms so it doesn't have to shoulder the re residual value risk within its core business. Think about it. If you're leasing them, you got to buy them back, essentially, okay? Think about all the stories we've had with all the people that got screwed at the end of 2022 that bought a Tesla before they started cutting prices the entirety of 2023, okay? If you're leasing, then the customers don't get screwed because the company owns them. But if you're selling these cars to people and then you're cutting the prices by 20, 30, 40%, right? Well, what happens? It's the customers that get screwed, not the company. It sounds harsh, man, but that's a reality of what's going on in this business right now, especially when you look at Tesla. Um, and, you know, they talk about the irony is that Elon has long argued that Tesla vehicles could become more valuable over time because of the self-driving software updates issued over the air. It has not worked out that way. I mean, is it really ironic that Elon Musk's words did not end up playing out to reality? Right. I mean, come on. Is, is that the definition of irony? I guess so. Um, but be careful on Tesla shares, man. They got almost a perfect storm right now in terms of competitors coming for them. Um, but guess what? Nonetheless, you're up by 2.6% to start things off. Pretty remarkable. You jump over to Apple shares right now. They're up by 6 tenths percent. We get the markets in positive territory. We check back in on yields. Yeah, sitting at about 4.14 right now as we wait for the Fed eight days from right now. But we get some important data, as Kevin was talking about, right? We get GDP. We get personal consumption and expenditures later in the week, uh, along with some pretty important companies for earnings as well. We jump to Intel. Intel, uh, with their numbers later in the week, and the chips getting hit. They're off by 1.8% right now. That's after the pullback yesterday morning as well. Intel down 90 cents at 47.33. Tesla up by 2.1. We jump over to AMD. Chip stocks down about three tenths percent right now as well. We jump over to some of those streamers. Disney down about half a percent. Yeah, they got some issues, man. We jump over to Netflix on the heels of their news. Poo, you give it all back. Watch out, folks. Uh, I guess the market. Yeah, I don't know how you interpret that. Pretty interesting when you come out the morning of and you're going to get earnings this evening, right? I'd say it's a good deal, but is it a good deal for $5 billion? It's probably going to drive some revenue. It's going to drive subscribers, but is it going to be worth $5 billion? Uh, that's the question the market asks itself when you have Netflix sitting at almost $500 and you get their earnings coming into the bell tonight. Yeah, and you're looking at about, if you want exposure through Friday, you're looking at about $40 of implied volatility in either direction, okay? 
and you're looking at about $39 priced in for the move. So Netflix, and then again, so if you're buying a put or a call, basically at the money, you're paying about $20 for this equity. You want to buy exposure in both directions, you're paying about $40. Decent move, priced in, rightfully so. Netflix particularly volatile, and they're going to have some answering to do in terms of how's the password sharing crackdown going, right? Probably pretty well. Um, how's the ad selling business going? Probably pretty well, which is why you've had this thing accelerate well off of the lows of 162. We're pushing 500. You are right at that 618. Always an interesting area on the Fibonacci retracement of that entire pullback. From 700, November 15th, down to 162 in May. Six months, man. Absolutely remarkable, this market. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got one more segment. You got the S&Ps barely holding on to gains by two points. We'll take a look at some other equities with some action. We'll be right back, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. You take a look at the markets. S&P's up by 5, NASDAQ 100 up by 21. You take a look. I'm going to jump to some of these FANG stocks and the markets. I mean, there are ABCDs possibly everywhere in this market, man. You jump to the S&P's right now, okay? You gap above that B point, man. You do it on some volume in the beginning of December. You're talking about 51.22 in the ES. That's the A point back in September of about 3,600. I took kind of the lows of the bars there. Your B point back in July, 
of about, what, 4,600 and change. Your A to B, C to D projection off that C point of 4,122, it's about 1,000 point A to B from 3,600 to about 4,600. You trade back down to 4,100. You're talking about 5,100. It's only 200 points, man, right? Not that outlandish. You jump over to the NASDAQ 100. You're talking about... How's that over there? 19,400. So 2,000 points potentially. And that's the A to B, C to D all the way from the beginning of the year, man. You're talking about 5,000 points, A to B. You pull back to your C point at 14,000. That brings you about just above 19,000. And they line up with some of the biggest equities out there. Let me get this back to a daily. No, oh, three-year weekly and then zoom in. There we go. Uh, Microsoft, you're looking at about 457 for a possible A to B, C to D. You jump over to Google shares. One second. There's my text. Uh, 170, that A to B. B point, you just got above that price level. Uh, it's important to keep in mind, man, because we got some movement going, especially on the tech stocks, and we're not that far away from completing all these, and maybe we just have just enough acceleration to get through those price levels. We will see, right? We check in on some of those equities that are moving today. United, up by 8.4% on their numbers, strong numbers. You jump over to Netflix on their deal. They give back most of the gains. You're up by 1.3%. And we got to talk about the Hang Seng, man, okay? Be careful in China, folks. Because this is what the Hang Seng looks like longer term. You were back to prices you traded at in 1997. 1997, the Hang Seng. Absolutely remarkable. And there is your longer term picture on a monthly basis. You can't even see the pop. Th thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman coming up with a